You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations, welcome to TFI, where this video is going to be heavily edited because there's no real direction, script, or structure to this. Uh, I just need to get a few things off my chest. It's obviously a rant towards Oculus and Facebook, as the title probably suggests. Uh, and it's all to do with VR, obviously. Now I understand if, if you're a, if you're a subscriber to the channel. Actually, most people who watch my videos aren't subscribers. Funny enough, but if you are, um, I know most of you guys aren't into VR because there's there's a big disconnect with VR. You know, if you've never used it, then it's it's difficult to to be engaged with it. But there's a lot of people out there who are and need to either have their experiences validated by this sort of stuff or the information is something they need to know prior to making the decision. So it was about three or four weeks after the Rift S, the Oculus Rift S launched, I did a comparison between that and the HTC Vive, the original one. And I felt that after three or four weeks of owning the Rift S, enough time and usage had gone by and I had under my belt to make a really good solid formed opinion on how the Rift S was and experience all the issues that it had and present them all in one video, which I did. It had multiple software issues, which I mentioned, but because it was only a few weeks after launch, I had to say and add, they've got time to fix these things. You know, it's very early days. I'm sure they'll fix them. Uh, and the conclusion at the end of that video was that the HTC Vive, this is in a nutshell, big time, uh, but the HTC Vive was the better product. It's better built, better quality, uh, but it's nowhere near as portable as the Rift S, which is really important in the enterprise setting, you know, in business, in an office, you want to set up a VR experience spontaneously. The Rift S is perfect for that, whereas the Vive is practically impossible. You can't be carrying around tripods and base stations with you whenever you want to set up a VR session in the boardroom uh, or a director's office on the fly. So the Rift S was the better choice of the two of them. It's got a better quality display, so text's sharper, and it's just easier to set up. It's two, it's two plugs. You can take in a good laptop and your Rift S into an office on the, on the fly, just spontaneously out of the blue, off you go, and you can be up and running with VR in a matter of seconds. If that's important to you, then the Rift S is an absolute no brainer. <laughs> What's been happening over the last four or five months and why am I doing this video, right? Oculus and Facebook have had six months to sort out the software issues with the Rift S and they haven't. There, it is still riddled with, frankly, deal-breaking issues. And, and I know, right, I, I get this out of the way as well. Whenever, you, whenever I see someone on the internet complaining about something, my, my immediate response is, well, maybe, maybe, maybe you've got an issue with the product you own, with the unit that you've got. You know, you, you're, having a, you're ranting about this, but maybe you all, the unit has an issue. I get that. However, I own three of these. I've got three Oculus Rift, I mean, I don't own three of them. This one's mine. This one is owned by the company that I work for. And then we've got a third one in the office and all three units have got the exact same issue. And those issues persist across multiple different PCs. I have about eight PCs and three laptops in my house. And then the office that I'm in has got hundreds of PCs and they're all at the higher end of the, of the specification spectrum. And the issues persist across all different variations of hardware and headsets so it's not unique to my unit so what are the issues well some of the issues which were present a few weeks after the rift s launched have lessened in frequency they've become less severe some have gone but many of them are still there so let's not talk about the issues that were at launch it's kind of pointless let's talk about the issues that we've got now today black screens inside the Rift S is not as frequent as it used to be, but there are times when you boot your PC up and we're, we're talking right at, at home. When you're using your Rift S or your Vive or whatever it is at home, you've got time, you've got patience, you've got a bit of flexibility and a bit of leeway there to kind of get over the issues that you have with this kind of technology. You know, if you fire up your Rift S, you put on the headset, and you get a black screen, it's completely dead. At home, it's it's kind of fine. You know, what's the hurry? You can get up off your chair, you can go to your PC, you can unplug it, plug it back in, sit back down. It might work, it might not, you might need a reboot, but you're at home, it's just you, do you care? Probably not, it's no big deal. At work, completely different ball game altogether. If that happens at work, 
it can be the difference between whoever you're trying to show the VR experience to saying, do you know what, I'm, 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 off, I'm off to a meeting, I'm, I can't, and you know, and they're embarrassed for you because you're, you, you, you brought them into the room, you're dead excited, you're like, mate, maybe it's a director, you know, maybe it's, it's the chief technical officer and you're like, mate, I've got this awesome VR experience and you really want to impress him. You really want to draw him in because if he's impressed, then that opens up possible funding opportunities to get better headsets, better PCs, better software. You never know. You're buzzing. You've got him in. You've bigged it up. You've hyped it up. You put the headset on him and you get a black screen in this. It's a deal breaker. And that happens. That's still happening in these headsets. And that's not good. It's not good. It's been happening for six months now. Oculus and Facebook keys have had six months to fix these sort of issues and they're still present. Now granted, the black screen inside the Rift S isn't as frequent as it used to be, but it still happens. However, the biggest issue by far, and the one that causes the most issues for me, is the Rift S forgetting the play space and requiring you to go through the setup of the Guardian far too often. So just to explain what this is, when you first buy your Rift S and you first plug it into your PC and you first put it on your head, it asks you to set up the environment. That involves basically telling it where the floor is, the floor level, and then setting up this sort of virtual play space, like a boundary guardian area, so that you know when you're in VR how close you are to physical walls and tables and stuff. You do it once, it stores it, and then that should be it. However, that's not it, because on a far too frequent basis, you'll fire up your PC, you'll put on the headset, and it'll just ask you to do it again. You end up with the, the little menu pop up inside the, the, the VR headset and you've got to go through that setup wizard again before you can start using the VR headset. And apologies for the shaky camera and audio. I've just thought I'll do a bit of an experiment here actually. Whilst I'm in the, you can clearly see I'm in the middle of editing this video. I thought, you know what, I'm going to plug in the Rift S and see if it's actually going to do exactly what I'm telling you it does too often. So um, there's the Oculus Rift. I haven't turned it on since I rebooted the PC. So. Uh, I'm going to stick my hand over the sensor, which simulates you putting the headset on. You can see the Oculus software is automatically firing up. And I'm going to see if it's taken me into the... Um, there you go. Look at that. Exactly what I said it would do. It's forgot the play space, and it's now telling me to continue setup in VR. And there it is. I've managed to mirror the Rift S onto, uh, onto the monitor. And there you go. There's the play area not found message. So what you've got to do, and this overrides any VR experience that you would have expected to have seen. Uh, go into continue, you've got to set the floor level, continue to find the play area, and this is what you've got to do. On, you can't see it on screen, but inside the headset there'll be sort of a virtual scan of the room, which you'll point, you know, you, you point this at the floor and you draw out the play space, uh, which I'm going to skip, acknowledge, and then off we go into the VR. I'm glad that happened because that ha that's exactly what happens in, in an office when you put your headset on. I've seen that happen in my units three or four times in an afternoon. <laughs> and uh, I've just been to offshore Europe, and this is kind of what spawned this video. I've just been to offshore Europe, which is one of the biggest exhibitions in, uh, in the UK. I, I assume it is, it's absolutely massive. I can't imagine there's many that are bigger than it. Uh, and I was manning a VR stand on offshore Europe where we had visitors come by on a regular basis so to see that I've got a TV on the wall, I've got the VR headset on a stand and I've got this really impressive graphic kind of drawing them in, put the headset on them and then they go into the VR experience for five minutes and then, you know, the, the idea is that our salesmen then talk to them and they're impressed with the VR headset, they're impressed with the product and it's one of these sort of draw, drawers in like a hook. I did that for three and a half days and after the first day, I was I was ready to drop kick this thing into the North Sea. I was infuriated with it. The amount of times where I put the headset on someone, picture it, right? So a stranger walks up and they're like, wow, this looks really impressive. And you're like, you look at their badge and think, actually, that, I know that company there. They could be a big client. So you put the headset on them and then you say to them, right, okay, so what you're going to see is your controller. You'll see, you know, you lift your hands up, you'll see your controller in one hand and then you'll see this vehicle in front of you. And they're sort of st stood there silent. And you're like, can you can you see that? Because what what they're seeing is different to what's being pushed onto the TV behind me. But I can't see what they see, and they're silent. And you say, well, what can you see? And they'll say, I can see a setup menu that says, can you set up the gut? And you're like, oh. 
So what I've got to do then is I've got to em very embarrassingly take the headset off them, right? I've, I've got to physically remove it from the head, put it on me, set up the Guardian again, and then give it back to them so that they can use the VR experience. That's unbearably, intolerably embarrassing. And it's unacceptable after six months of this product being in production. That shouldn't be a thing. Now, again, I understand if you've only ever used a VR headset at home, it's probably quite difficult to kind of appreciate the, how bad that is when you're in that kind of a setting. But when I was walking around offshore Europe, there was so many companies there who had a VR experience and they all obviously went for the Rift S purely because of the sensors not requiring base stations, which are a nightmare to set up in like a booth or a stand. And, and I was speaking to quite a few of the people I was walking past and knowing that I was going to end up making a video like this. I asked a few of them, I was like, hey, any issues with your, with your Rift S? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> quite a few. So not only was that a problem, the majority of people said that the biggest problem that they had was the controllers. Because Oculus have, I, I don't know what they were thinking, but basically, right, your controllers use a AA battery per controller, okay? It's got a little removable tray thing here, cover, and then you've got a single AA battery inside there. Fine. That's not fine. I actually think that's absolutely ridiculous and it's a regression from the integrated rechargeable batteries that are in the Vive controllers. But what happens is these batteries drain like nobody's business. And when the battery is nearly low, the Oculus Rift will spawn a message inside the headset to tell you that your battery's low and it will take precedence over anything that's going on in the headset. And yet again, if you've got the headset mirrored to a telly, you can't see that warning message. So when you're looking at what you think the VR user is looking at, you're not seeing that. So you put the headset on, you put the headset on someone and you say, right, okay, so you should be able to see your hand in front of you. Can you see the vehicle in front of you? And they'll say, no, I can, uh, I can see a message saying battery controller low and yeah, yeah. And what I've done now is it's been literally 30 seconds after I filmed the last footage that you saw and I've replaced the battery in one of the controllers with the battery that I know is running a little bit low. There's still juice left in it, but it's a little bit low. And I'm now gonna fire on the headset. I'm gonna put my hand over the sensor to simulate me turning on uh, the headset with my forehead. Uh, there's the two controllers. One of the batteries is low. And there you go, and that, that's exactly what happens. So it basically the Oculus just goes, yeah, I don't give a toot, I don't give a crap about what it is you're looking at or who's using the headset. I'm gonna cancel what you're doing, and I'm gonna spawn this message to tell you that your battery is low. And then when you click okay on it, it'll go back to normal. The controller's still actually working. It'll go back to normal for about a minute, two minutes, possibly five, I don't know what the timer is, but it'll then spawn the message again at a time that you really, don't want it to spawn. And it's usually when you put the VR headset on somebody else, they're not quite sure what to make of it. And none of this needs to happen Oculus. This is really, really bad software design. I don't need a battery warning message to completely override my VR experience. A Windows notification would have sufficed, to be honest. I don't know what they were, honestly don't know what they were thinking. This is not good, this is not good. These things, like once it happens to you once, that's it. You, you kind of, it's not it's not something you can just overlook like when you're at home. These things which ruin and embarrass your, your whole vibe going on on that stand, they're not gonna wanna bring this thing back to, a, to an exhibition anytime soon. It's too, too, too much trouble. It's way too much trouble, it's embarrassing. Uh, so what my, what my feelings are is that, unfortunately, for me personally, I can't recommend the Rift S anymore. I can't do it, not after the experience I had at Offshore Europe, the amount, of, the amount of issues and embarrassment that I went through trying to get this thing to work consistently to the point where before I put it on someone's head, I had to put it on my head first to make sure that there was no guardian messages or battery messages before I then gave the uh, the user the headset. Wait until the Vive Cosmos comes out, which I don't know when you're seeing this video, but it's due to come out at the start of October 2019. I've placed a pre-order, so I'm buying it for myself. I'll be doing a video on the channel, probably do a few videos on the channel on the Vive Cosmos. Uh, but that has inside out tracking. It doesn't require the Vive base stations and providing that that doesn't have any ludicrously amateurish software issues like the Oculus Rift S does, 
that's looking like it's going to be next year's major business uh, appropriate headset for the likes of boardrooms and the likes of exhibitions i'm sorry oculus and facebook i've i've run out of patience intolerance for for incompetence uh so i'm i'm not gonna say oh you've got time to think no no no, no. You've, you've blown it for me personally not the end of the world i'm sure you don't care i'm not gonna cry about it but uh for anyone who's watching this take please, please take that on board if you're thinking about buying a rift s for business hold fire mate hold fire for the vive cosmos and see what that's looking like and if you are going to be using it for business i feel quite awkward saying this but try to not take your advice from gaming channels and in magazine websites that are you know maybe you've only had it for a day go to channels that uh, use the products in the real world uh, in scenarios where you think you're going to use it and uh, get your advice from those so that'll do it that's all i've got hopefully you found this helpful if you did get subscribed because i'll be doing the vive cosmos videos at the start of october probably mid-october so get subscribed if you want to see those and uh, help me out on patreon if, if you like these kind of videos so thank you very much that's all i've got and i'll see you in the next one Toodles.